Welcome to day three of our seven day get ready for the holidays challenge. So far, we've cleaned up our kitchen. We've done some exercises. We've gone for a walk. We've learned how to reduce our stress a little bit. And we've done some fun things for the holidays. There's more to come today. Today, we're going to do another inside exercise that I encourage you to do first thing in the morning. It'll help you get energized and ready and focused, but really you can do it any time of day. It doesn't matter. Then we're going to make lists. Everybody's favorite, you know, making a list, checking it twice, you know, all that. We have another mindfulness tip for when you start to get stressed and you feel the panic building up another technique that will help to bring you back and get you focused again. And last of all, we're going to try a new craft as our holiday fun. So stay tuned. Let's get energized with some exercise. First, we're going to warm up just a little bit. And remember, I'm keeping this to five to seven minutes. It's just a get ready to go, but keep moving. Open up our hips a little bit. Swing our arms. Get the shoulders moving. W, up, down, up, down. Now we're going to pick up our dumbbells. With our dumbbells at our shoulders, we're going to do a reverse lunge. Remember, we're going to step back, keep up on the toe, come down as much as you comfortably can and then press up, step up. Get your balance. We're gonna do 10 of these. Do them slow. One more on the right leg. And good. For round two, we're going to hold the dumbbells down by our side. We're going to step forward into a lunge. So the position looks exactly the same as the reverse lunge did, except I stepped forward instead of backward and I have the weights down by my side. Take your time. Last one. Now for round three, we're going to come into a squat position with our dumbbells down by our side. Remember when you squat, hips go back first. If you need to use a square, if you need to use a chair or a bench to squat to, that's perfectly fine. Hips go back. Come down into the squat, come up, hammer curl, and 10 of these slowly. Two more. Last one. 
put the dumbbells down. Let's stretch out our shoulders a little bit. Let's circle those hips and knees. Feet close, knees together. And other way. And there we are, warmed up and energized and ready to go to the next thing on our holiday list. So for our holiday prep, we've cleaned up our kitchen, we've gotten it all ready to prepare the holiday foods coming up. And now we know what we have in our cupboards and our refrigerator and we need to make a list of what we need for the upcoming meals and desserts and cookies and whatever else you traditionally creating your kitchen for this time of year. A great place to start is to pull out all of your recipes. You've already inventoried what you've got in your house. Look at your recipes and figure out what you need to go and get. I know a lot of people use their phones to make lists for groceries and things like that. And the Alexa app has um, a really good list building, although sometimes she puts some really strange things on our lists, especially when Joe is telling her to put things on the list. Never know what you might end up with. But my favorite thing to do is to write by hand. I love to do that. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel calm. And I love paper, pens, pencils, and notebook. I couldn't actually tell that by looking at my desk or anything. By far my favorite notepad for making lists or going to the grocery store or going to one of the big box stores to get things is this notebook that says, I love lists. Um, I like it because it's spiral bound. You can rip the page out. It's long so you can make a list without having to tear the paper or wasting the whole other side of it, which really bugs me, by the way. So this is my list building. What's your favorite way to build your list? For the holiday fun part of today's challenge, I'm gonna encourage you to either pick up an old craft that you haven't done for a long time or start a new craft for the holiday. Don't go crazy and say, I'm gonna hand make something for everyone on my gift list. That will A, drive you crazy and B, never happen. The idea of picking up a craft this time of year is stress reduction. And I find that the fiber arts really reduce my stress level. I learned to knit and crochet and sew when I was very young and I have very fond memories of doing those things with my mother. So I'm revisiting something that she and I always used to do this time of year and that is make crocheted snowflakes. And these are great because not just they're not just for Christmas. You can hang snowflakes all winter long. Once you take them off your tree, you can hang them from your windows. Um, you can pretty much do anything with them. You can use them as gift decorations. They don't take long and they're a lot of fun to make. I'm using crochet thread. As you can see, I've started my snowflake already. I can usually make one in about 15 or 20 minutes, depending on if I'm trying to watch something on TV while I'm doing it. I am using a very fine crochet cotton and a very small crochet hook, but feel free to use whatever size yarn and whatever size crochet hook you may have. Remember, the bigger the yarn and the bigger the crochet hook, the easier it will be to do the stitches. So check that out. If crochet is not for you, find something that speaks to your heart. Maybe it's woodworking, maybe it's sewing, maybe it's doing something with clay or painting. It doesn't matter. Find what speaks to your heart and try it out this holiday. For today's mindfulness, I want to introduce you to the 54321 technique of grounding yourself and pulling yourself back from maybe that over anxious, almost panic feeling. It's something that can be used by anybody. It works great with children when they get overstimulated and you really want to bring them back down. It's totally appropriate for them. A lot of schools use it in their classrooms. So here's how it goes. When you start to feel 
that anxiety creeping up. I'm going to stop, take a couple of deep breaths. Then you're going to look around your room or wherever you are for five things you can see. Um, for example, I see an umbrella. I see a light. I see a chair. I see a weight bench. <laughs> and I see my notebook. So five things you see. Next, four things that you can feel. Now, you want to be careful and not have it be something dangerous. And if you're working with children, you don't want them like running all over trying to feel things. So within your, within your immediate area, four things that you can feel or touch. And say them out loud. Wood. Rope. Fabric. rubber, shoe. Next is three things you can hear. You see where we're going with this. We're using all of our senses and that's forcing our brain to stop thinking about what was upsetting us and look for those things. That's a little, hearing is a little challenging depending on where you, hearing can be a little challenging depending on where you are. Sometimes you have to really focus in. I can hear the fluorescent lights. I can hear the clock ticking. Really honing in. I can hear a dog barking in the distance outside. Next, we're going to... Next, two things I can smell. Again, could be a little challenging depending on where you are. It could be a good smell, a bad smell, an indifferent smell. Could be a good smell or a bad smell, doesn't matter. Hopefully you're not in a place that has too many bad smells. I smell a candle burning. And I smell banana bread baking. Yes, folks, I have banana bread baking upstairs. And the last one is taste, number one. If you're working with children, please don't have them. If you're, if you're working with children, make sure they're not like going around trying to lick everything possible. There may not be something appropriate for you to actually taste, but visualize. Um, since I'm in my home gym, I don't really have any tasteable things down here. But since I was smelling the banana bread, I can almost taste that in my mouth. So that's what I'm going to go with for taste. So here's your five, four, three, two, one. Five things you see, four things you touch, three things you hear, two things you smell, and one thing you taste or you imagine you taste. By the time you do all five of these things, you will be much calmer and your children will be out of that hyperactive mode. Turn this into a game. Have it be a family afternoon thing when kids are bouncing off the wall and the phone's ringing and you're trying to get things done. Take a couple minutes and do this activity. You won't be disappointed.